Well, let's talk about the milk example. And the milk example, it could be any product or resource. But economically, I use milk as an example, beginning economics and teaching the subject to illustrate the issue with resource allocation and also the issue of central planning. Economics, at its most basic level of a definition, is human action regarding scarce resources that have alternative uses. So basically, we have to work within the world of limits, limitation on resources. We make decisions because of those limits and because we can't have everything that we want or need, that causes us to make choices and arrange our wants and needs according to what we most value first, followed by what we value in the next place. So, those, the fact that there is scarcity, it's an inescapable reality of the world that can't be wished away, legislated away, voted away by any means, but can be dealt with and mitigated to greater or lesser degrees of effectiveness. But scarcity also has built into it necessarily another factor, which is that these scarce resources, the availability of resources, the resources that we use or could use could potentially be used for something else. Meaning, any item we use, time, money, energy, resources, could potentially have been put to other purposes. So if I cut down a tree to burn as firewood, that tree could have also been cut down to use as lumber. And so it can't be used for both of those purposes. It's called an opportunity cost. It's what we give up in order to get what we want. But what if most, most multiple people want to use the tree? Opens up another discussion about property and, and appropriation and how to use those things. But the example I use is milk. Say there's milk and the job of a central planner is to get milk to a small town. But everyone, but not only milk, milk can be used for other things. Milk can be used for drinking milk. It can be used for an ingredient in ice cream. It can be used to, as an ingredient to make cheese. And it can be used to make sour cream. And there are probably multiple other things that we could think of if we sat and thought about all the alternative uses for milk. And the milk that is made or used as an ingredient for cheese cannot be reversed and used for drinking milk. It has been dedicated to that purpose and so those other purposes have been given up. So, how do you determine what is the right amount of something for, let's say, a small town? So there's a group of people sitting around, their job is to get the right amount of these resources to people. Well, you could, just with those four uses for milk, split it four different ways equally in the sense that everybody, we're gonna dedicate <coughs> milk, a fourth toward drinking milk, sour cream, cheese, and ice cream. The problem with this, and then distribute it, and everybody gets the same amount of each of these items. The problem with this is people want and use 
and value milk and those other products at different levels. There may be somebody who is lactose intolerant who doesn't drink any milk at all. There may be a household who drinks a lot of milk. Maybe a household who uses milk for cooking but doesn't drink a lot of it. However, they all get the same amount. And what this ends up happening, just with milk, as with the other products as well, but just using milk as the example, what ends up happening is milk is wasted in some places and it is needed in others in the same small economy. And these people could potentially, if they know about each other, trade and kind of let those things level out. But if they don't know about each other, this means that somebody is throwing out milk or that it's going bad because they don't need or use that much milk. And others are wishing that they had more. And so that ends up in both want and waste. We could also send out a survey to the people of the town. How many gallons of milk do you drink per week? We send these out to every household. But built into this survey is the assumption that, number one, that people's estimations will be right. Number two is built in the assumption that their estimations don't change. I myself don't drink that much milk. But if I have guests over to my house and they're overnight guests and they want to drink milk in the morning and they're used to having cereal in the morning, I might buy more milk than I otherwise would. So this survey would have to keep track with real time decisions and changes in factors, changes in tastes, all these things. But even if all that could be kept track of in a survey, and all those problems could be avoided, you'd still run into the same problem as mentioned originally. Because if people respond in a survey, it basically ends up that the resources are averaged out. And so if someone says that they drink one gallon a week, Somebody else, another household, says they drink 10 gallons a week. The average is five. And so the average of five for the person household who drinks one is too much. And for the person who wants 10 is too little. Not to mention the other products as well. So doesn't necessarily work democratically to to vote on those things, nor would it work to have a representative try to decide for each household what is the right amount. Because that representative would be going by their own subjective valuation of how much milk they want. Which reminds me of me, I don't drink coffee, just because I don't care for it. And I was put in charge of bringing coffee to a uh, men's breakfast. And, you know, I got the cheapest coffee possible and we got it put together and people were drinking it. And I said, Josh, this coffee, oh man, it's bitter, it's terrible. This is some like real cheap stuff. And I said, well, I don't care, I don't drink coffee. So imagine that as a representative making the decision for other people of their economic wants and needs. So, economics has to solve a very real problem. How do you allocate scarce resources that have alternative uses? Because something used for one thing could be used for something else. How do we know what is the right amount of milk used for drinking milk versus being used for cheese? And how do we know what the amounts are of those things? Not that you just have to choose one or the other, but how do we know what way is there to peacefully figure this out? 
and solve this problem? Well, when there is ownership in the system, someone owns a cow or owns the milk, and then other people want to either for their own consumption or to sell to others in the market, when they want to the milk for those other purposes, they can buy it. The ice cream creator, the cheese creator, the sour cream creator can all come to the person with the milk and ask to buy the milk. And because they're all there, people driving by here, and because they're all there at the same time and wanting the same resource, the price of the milk will increase, representing two related things. One, the scarcity of the resource. There are limits. You can't have all, uh, you can't have an endless supply of it. So one, the price represents the scarcity, plus number two, the demand. When there is more demand on the same amount of resources, the prices rise. When there is less demand on the same amount of resources, the prices fall. Conversely, when supply increases, prices fall. When supply is decrease, prices tend to rise if demand remains the same. So for example, the person selling milk, the price could fall because even though there's more people demanding it at the same time, causing that one milk seller to be able to charge more, someone else would be incentivized to enter the market and sell milk, but that competition lowers the price. So prices, imperfectly, but amazingly, help coordinate the system because they indicate how much is available of a certain resource and send important signals. High prices indicate scarcity and more demand of a resource. Low prices represent a more abundant supply and or less demand of that thing. And these prices, without having to have perfect knowledge of all the specific workings of all the factors of an economy in real time, indicate to us how resources are being used and where resources are most urgently needed.